A Bourbon County police officer is being honored and fitted for a bulletproof vest. We'll tell you why coming up. Police in Louisville are looking for the man they say stole a painting from the Muhammad Ali Center. A baby was born not once, but twice at a Texas hospital. The reason for this rare procedure ahead at 4.30. This is WKYT News at 4.30. Good afternoon, Sam Dick and Amber Philpott reporting. A Bourbon County police officer shot in the line of duty is being honored today. Officer Abdullah Balad was, injured, was not injured because the bullet was stopped by his bulletproof vest. As Mike Linden reports, the company who makes the vest is replacing his for free. It's our top story at 4.30. A Bourbon County police officer is in Lexington being fitted for a brand new bulletproof vest one week after being shot on the job. Last week, Bourbon County police officer Abdullah Balat was shot while responding to a shots fired call in Paris. Officials say had Balat not been wearing his bulletproof vest, he may have died. To honor the officer's work, the body armor manufacturer Point Blank Body Armor is replacing the vest free of charge. Point Blank Body Armor Regional Sales Manager Dan Wheeler says three people in Kentucky this year have been saved because they were wearing body armor. Five to ten years ago, people didn't wear their body armor as much as they do now because technology has come, and come so far that it's lighter weight, it's thinner, it's more comfortable. Wheeler says the vest will be ready in about 30 days, and when it is ready, it will be presented to Officer Balat in Paris. In Lexington, Mike Linden, WKYT. Wheeler says Officer Balat is also invited to tour the plant where the vests are made in Florida. Ashland police have charged a man with murder for the death of a Boyd County man. Jacob Lane was arrested last week for an unrelated burglary case. Now police say they've added a murder charge. The victim, 21-year-old Justin Reeder, was reported missing last Monday. His body was found yesterday in Ohio. Police have not said what might have led to that murder. An art gallery dedicated to boxing legend Muhammad Ali has one fewer piece today. As we first told you here last night, police say this man grabbed a piece of artwork and ripped it right off the wall. As William Joy reports, the theft happened over the weekend at the Muhammad Ali Center in Louisville. Well, Leroy Neiman and Muhammad Ali go way back, like to the 60s. A gallery of nearly 70 sketches and prints illustrates the relationship between the greatest fighter of all time and one of sports' greatest artists. He would go ringside to a lot of his fights. In fact, I think he was at the Rumble in the Jungle in Zaire even. Ali Center spokeswoman Jeannie Conkey says the gallery isn't just a trove of treasured art. You can see the, the movement in them, which is part of what made him so famous. It's a picture book of the fighter's past. Some across the room, they're all about Ali Frazier. And so it's really fun. You know, you get, a, you get a little bit of history of Muhammad's boxing career as well. But this weekend, a piece of that history was stolen. Police say this man came into the gallery Saturday around 1 p.m., ripped this print signed by the late artist off the wall, and walked right out. Only two brown patches remain. This gallery is very special. Police say the print is worth $5,000, but the museum says its real value, along with the rest of the art, are priceless. Leroy admired Muhammad. Muhammad admired Leroy. Guests coming in here just love it. Ali Center leaders say they have added more security measures to prevent a theft from happening again. The gallery has been part of the museum since it opened back in 2005. The prints and sketches were donated by Leroy Neiman. That's a shame. It is a it shame. Well, beautiful sunny day out there, but we could see, and we really need it, we could see some rain this week. We want to check in now with Chief Meteorologist Chris Ailey. We're not thinking about that rain just yet, are we? You know what? It's small chances coming up on Thursday, then again later this weekend. It's hard to think about that on a day that is featuring absolutely gorgeous weather. Let's take you into southeastern Kentucky because we've been watching this Jackson Sky Cam, waiting for those colors to take off, and there you go. You're starting to see now. This is the peak of the. Uh, 
leaves across central and eastern Kentucky. So the leaves are doing their thing. They're showing off, doing it uh, in the backyard here as well at WKYT with those leaves in our WKYT weather garden. Really showing a little fall color right now. 59 Covington, the cool spot, into the low and mid 60s for the rest of central and eastern Kentucky. And with today that started out with a lot of frost out there in much of the region with temperatures as low as the freezing mark in a few spots out there. So allergy sufferers got to be liking this. Heading out, uh, heading out this evening, he says, or heading out 55 down to 44 between 7 and 11 o'clock as uh, some chillier air continues to settle back in. Guys, when I come back in a few minutes, we'll fire up the hour-by-hour -hour forecast to show you how a couple of fronts will impact the region over the next five days. Thank you, Chris. This next story is really pretty incredible. A baby in Texas has two birthdays to celebrate. That is because doctors removed her briefly from her mother's womb to perform life saving surgery, then put her back in until she reached full term. Don Champion talked with the family. Smile. And she giggles a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Margaret and Jeff Bomer are enjoying watching their four month old daughter, Lindley, grow up. It didn't always seem possible. The doctor came in and told us that they saw something on the ultrasound. In the middle of her mother's pregnancy, doctors discovered a massive tumor growing from Lindley's tailbone. It was a big shock, and um, we were scared. And um, I had just suffered a miscarriage the prior year. To think that I might lose another baby was very hard. The rare tumor had robbed Lindley of blood and would have caused her heart to give out before birth. Lindley would not have made it uh, without this surgery. Dr. Daryl Cass and his team at Texas Children's Hospital in Houston performed an emergency fetal operation on Lindley. At almost 24 weeks, doctors pulled almost half of her body out of her mother's uterus and removed 90% of the tumor. Then came the challenge of putting Lindley back in and closing the uterus. We have to get the tumor away, but then we have to make sure that the baby can stay safely inside for a number of weeks afterward in order to have any chance of a survival. Lindley was essentially born a second time 12 weeks later. She's doing great now. She's. Um... We're practicing rolling over. Doctors will continue to monitor Lindley all the way into adulthood. So far, she is reaching all of her milestones. Don Champion, CBS News, Houston. There really are no words for that. Remarkable, maybe, but doctors removed the remaining 10% of Lindley's tumor eight days after she was born. They also had to remove her tailbone to make sure that that tumor doesn't grow back. Well, a tip of the cap to the Kentucky Colonel, UK's campus newspaper, which has won the Pacemaker Award from the Associated Collegiate Press, known as the Pulitzer Prize of College Journalism. It is the third time in the past 10 years the Colonel has won a Pacemaker, ranking the paper in the top 1% in the country. Earlier this year, the Colonel fought a court battle with the university over documents relating to a sexual assault investigation. The World Series between the Cleveland Indians and the Chicago Cubs starts tonight, but it wouldn't be complete without a little piece of Kentucky. Both teams will be using Louisville Sluggers. Of course, they're made right here in Kentucky. Louisville Slugger delivered bats to the Indians over the weekend, and the Cubs will have their bats in time for the game. Louisville Slugger says that 60% of all major league players use a slugger. Tonight's the night. The streets around Transylvania University will be packed for a popular Halloween tradition here in Lexington. The sixth annual Pumpkin Mania is scheduled for tonight. Everyone in the community is invited to come out. From 6 to 7 tonight, there's going to be trick or treating. And then at 7, hundreds of jack o' lanterns will be lit up on the steps of Old Morrison off West 3rd Street. If you have never been, you should definitely check it out. Great night for it. Oh, great weather. Can't miss. Sting preparing to take the stage at the American Music Awards. How he will be honored ahead. Now, your hour by hour forecast with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey. Beautiful day out there across central and eastern Kentucky. We cannot complain that we haven't had a gorgeous fall. It has been absolutely spectacular with a lot of those vibrant fall colors now really showing out. Take advantage, go outside, just unwind and enjoy. The beautiful weather and those nice colors. Down the mountain park way we go, a live sky cam showing a mix of sun and a little high cloud cover. WKYT Weather Garden, mix of sun, a little high cloud cover. And the leaves are now beginning to drop in our weather garden. Put the boys to work out there. 
uh, doing a little raking over the next few days. Upper 50s to low 60s into much of central and northern parts of the region. A little warmer the farther south that we go. And it's quite the temperature gradient that is setting up across the Ohio Valley from northeast to southwest. And that's the pattern we're going to be in over the next couple of weeks. We're going to get a lot of bouncing back and forth with your temperatures. That's typical this time of year. The warm ups may outdo the cool shots, but I'm telling you, the pattern is getting ready to flip toward wintertime early this year as we go into the middle and second part of November. So, kiddos, hang on. Uh, right now, across central and eastern Kentucky, a little more in the way of some cloud cover the farther north that we go. And that's the dividing line between the milder air to the southwest and the really cold stuff into parts of the Great Lakes and the northeast, where it is snowing into many areas right now. Not worried about that. Uh, also a nice temperature gradient to our west. Chilly coming in behind the front, downright warm out ahead of it. Gusty winds as well. And that's a system that will get in here for the day on Thursday. And if you're looking for a lot of rain as we close the door on October, you're not going to find it across the Bluegrass State. You got a couple of chances. Best chance is Thursday. And even there, it's scattered at best. A smaller chance late Saturday and into Sunday. Let's walk you through a pair of cold fronts that are on the way. Both of these fronts are kind of dry in terms of the amount of moisture. First front will zip its way quickly through here as we go into Thursday. And watch how the winds turn from the northwest. But that front never quite just dives all the way to the south. So as we start the day on Friday, a chill is in the air, maybe a little touch of frost. Friday afternoon, here we go, some warmer air surging back in across central and eastern Kentucky. And by the time we roll into Saturday afternoon, southwesterly winds are screaming across the Ohio Valley. Saturday is your textbook definition of a windy and a mild late October day. Those winds can gust up 25, 30 miles per hour in temperatures low to mid 70s as we go into Saturday afternoon. That next front that comes in on Sunday, right now just does not have a strong push to it is being shunted more from west to east instead of diving on in so that means we will likely stay milder than normal sunday and into halloween as we say goodbye to the month of october have i mentioned it's going to be windy let's take you through the evening and through tonight and tomorrow winds may gust up 20 25 miles per hour at times may settle those down a little bit into the middle of the day, but tomorrow night as that front nears, look at the gusts approaching 30. Tomorrow night into Thursday morning, winds borderline 30 miles per hour. That'll carry us into noontime on Thursday. Southwesterly winds, northwesterly winds. That's that shot of colder air that is coming into play for the second half of Thursday as temperatures drop as our winds shift around a little bit. Seven day forecast. Kiddos, it is Halloween time. On Monday, and it looks good right now. I can't find anything scary from Mother Nature. If you remember two Halloweens ago, we had a little snow. We that's, did. That's not going to be the case this year. Hey, and some kiddos getting an early jump on trick or treating, mm -hmm. trick or treating night over there at Transit. What a great night. Perfect. I yeah. mean, we'll drop it into the 50s after the sun dies down, but who cares? It's beautiful, right? Gorgeous. Oh. Nobody wants to wear a coat with their trick or treat. <laughs> well, that's true. Outfit. That's right. Thanks, bud. How would you like for your little one to be a superstar swimmer? I'm Deanne Stevens out and about with more on the all new Aqua Tots today. It's a place for your little ones to get a head start on swimming. Our Deanne Stevens is out and about poolside at Aqua Tots with the details. Hi, Deanne. Hey, good afternoon, guys. We are poolside today. What a great way to enjoy the afternoon here. We are at a very unique place called Aqua Tots. Just recently opened. Lindsay Thayer is with us, and Aqua Tots is just a whole new concept, isn't it? Tell us about it. So um, here at Aqua Tots, uh, right now we currently have a, a class with about a 12-month-old child. Um, she's learning how to pull herself out of the water. She's learning how to float on her back, what to do if she were if she were to fall in a pool, how to turn around, grab that wall, pull herself out. So really focusing on safety. Um, right now we also have uh, a level four class going on with kids who are about three, four years old. Um, they're learning the basic foundational swim skills. So they're learning how to again float on their back. Um, they're learning elementary backstroke, freestyle, what to do if they were to fall into a pool, how to be safe. The, the first class you were talking about has the mother and the instructor in there, and you said that's from what, four months? 
as, yeah, as young as four months old um, till they're about two, two and a half. They do have an adult in the pool with them. And did you see that? She just went under. And you said that's key. Don't be frightened, parents. We take them under, but that's something good for kids Absolutely. to know what happened. That's how they're going to learn. We have to do some immersions with them. And I love the fact that the way this place is set up, as Darnell has been showing you guys, the glass. The chairs, the parents have the opportunity to sit and watch the lesson because there's nothing more nerve wracking than having a young one around the water. Absolutely. Um, safety is first and foremost here. We want as many eyes on the kids uh, as we can. Um, and the parents, of course, love to watch what's going on. So the glass is ideal. And I love all the different games that you have lined up because games help kids learn. Absolutely. Um, we finish every lesson with a really fun game. So they're finishing their lesson with all smiles, um, ready to hop out of the pool and go tell mom and dad all about it. And I also understand it's not just the kids who can learn how to swim here at Aqua Tots. We also uh, teach adults. Um, typically, we do our adult lessons at the end of the night, um, so there's not too many people in, in the facility, um, and we take all the lane lines down so we can use the majority of the pool. Well, because you said a lot of adults really just want to be able to swim the length of the pool. They do. We have adults who uh, want to learn what to do, you know, if they were to fall in a body of water, how to float um, first and foremost, um, and then they sometimes want to just refine their strokes and be able to swim from one end to the other. All right, so how do folks get more info on Aqua Tots? Uh, you can check us out on our website, aqua-tots.com or just give us a call. Excellent. And they are located, by the way, on Rusio Way, right behind Meyer off of Reynolds Road. Very cool place, parents, for your little ones to learn how to swim. I'm Deanne Stevens, out and about. Back to you guys. All right. Could be life-saving. Yeah, you never something know. something all of us need to know how to do, yeah. for sure. Sting preparing to receive a big honor next month, and Mel Gibson is back as a director. Suzanne Marquez has your eye on entertainment. Sting will take center stage at the American Music Awards next month, performing a medley of hits and a single from his upcoming album. The British rocker will receive a special merit award for his long musical career. America's most famous shoes are getting a makeover. The Smithsonian reached its fundraising goal to restore Dorothy's ruby slippers from The Wizard of Oz. The public donated $300,000. Here on the red carpet, director Mel Gibson returns to the Hollywood spotlight with his new film, Hacksaw Ridge. Gibson and the cast attended a special screening last night. Based on a true story, Andrew Garfield stars as an American soldier who saved more than 75 men during one of the bloodiest battles of World War II. He serves as an example and an inspiration to anyone that watches this thing. A bit late for target practice now, don't you think? Hacksaw Ridge is Gibson's first directing project in 10 years. It hits theaters next Friday. Tony Award winner Leslie Odom Jr. received a Princess Grace statue at the Foundation's Gala in New York last night. Whenever you feel yourself sitting on your couch and waiting for things to come to you, it's about leaning forward, dusting yourself off, and getting out there and trying to make things happen for yourself. Odom, who played Aaron Burr in the hit Broadway musical Hamilton, received a scholarship from the foundation early in his career. That's your Eye on Entertainment. Suzanne Marquez, CBS News, Los Angeles. Nothing to really see here, just a tree getting arrested. Find out what a man wearing an evergreen suit was doing in the middle of the road. Coming up on WKYT. No complaints here as far as this weather. Nope. None. Probably Chris Bailey wouldn't listen to us anyway if no, we did complain, but we're yeah. not today, buddy. Complaint department is closed, guys, until further notice. All right. It's been a heck of a fall so far. Beautiful weather, nice temperatures, and it rolls on out there right now. Low to mid 60s across most of central and eastern Kentucky. Mix of sun and a little high cloud cover, but overall, can't really find a whole lot to complain about. Yeah, it's a little dry, but it is fall after all. And your Defender Radar Network with a little high cloud cover in the northern parts of the area. And into the southern sections, we're going to notice those temperatures starting to surge up a little quicker than everywhere else. Up and down we go with the thermometer forecast and a brand new hour by hour outlook coming up. Right now, let's take a look at traffic with Officer Don. New collision at Manowar and Boston. This one just happened. No one's hurt, but one lane of the inner loop of Manowar is blocked near Boston right now uh, because of the crash. Now, drive times to Nicholas still about 14 minutes to Georgetown, 16, and Paris looks okay. 22 minutes uh, in the Bourbon County from Lexington. Now back to you in the studio. Officer Don, thank you. A zombie walk in Florida. A giraffe makes its debut and a tree gets arrested. It's the video that will have you talking. Take a look at this.
Thousands of costumed zombies roaming through Key West on bicycles along shorelines and streets during the annual zombie bike ride. The sunset ride drew more than 8,000 dressed in ragged garments. The zombie bike ride is a pre-Halloween tradition for families and groups. The standouts included a supersized zombie pelican carrying its long dead catch and a skeleton fish with fangs. Mm. A new baby giraffe made its debut at the Oregon Zoo in Portland, and man, is he cute. Buttercup, mm. a two-year-old Maasai giraffe, is the park's newest addition. And after making the trip from the Santa Barbara Zoo, he took some time out to check out his new home. Buttercup stands tall at 12 feet, but will grow to at least 18. Mm. These giraffes are the tallest mammals on the planet. Not really. Well, I guess it is a baby, but it doesn't seem like it, it does right? Not look like a baby, mm -hmm. does it? This next story is just a little odd. Police in Portland, Maine, arrested a man dressed up as a tree. Look right there in the middle of your screen. He was charged with obstructing traffic. Police removed the evergreen tree outfit and gave it to Public Works. The unnamed man is now in jail. A friend of the man says he was trying to study the city's traffic patterns. It's a really good way to get hit me? and potentially killed. Studying traffic so, patterns, right? Yeah, I can't imagine calling you up and going, Amber, I'm going to be a tree today. <laughs> it's like, okay. Mm -mm. No. Mm -mm. All right. On that note, stick with us. Here's what we're working on for you now at five o'clock.